Welcome to the NDSU Carrington Research Extension uh, Center's organic tour. We are standing on the organic ground. This is one of two fields we have. Um, and this field has been certified organic since uh, 2007, excuse me, 16. Anyway, we're, st we're standing in front of the wheat flax intercrop trial, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Now, intercropping is something that's become very popular in most recent years, in particular the last few. It's not a new concept, although intercropping has been done for years. It's, been, it's being done all around the world, particularly in, in many nations where, they, where farmers are not using a lot of inputs. And so, in particular, to also wheat flax intercropping, there's, there's information that goes back to the 20s that show farmers in the Dakotas were doing this. So it's not new. We're not reinventing the wheel, but we're learning how to use new technology and new tricks to make it better. Intercropping wheat flax, ironically, is reported in our annual report in 1991, was looked at in this research center under conventional plot ground from 1989 to 1991 by Dr. Pat Carr. This, this data showed in the early years, in the first couple years, we looked at, uh, at, at varying the rates uh, of, of and, or excuse me, varying the, the row arrangements and how it was seeded, broadcast and stuff. Basically, the data showed that it, through economic analysis and other factors, that it didn't pay and there was no yield advantage. Then, a couple years later, from 90 to 91, it was remodified and it was looked at it from the standpoint of, of varying the seeding rates. Still not concise of research, although it did show that in the in that we in 1990 the flax yielded two bushels to the acre, and and, and in 1991 we were getting seven bushels to the acre. Now that's significant, with showing a very little drop in yield on the wheat. Let's go to 2020. We're we're very, we're we revisiting it again, but we're going into the, using it under organic production. Now organic flax is one of the crops that we have found in our research out here that competes very poorly when we compare it to conventional plot yields. Many of the other crops such as wheat and oats and barley, the yields are fairly comparable, particularly under years that are not um, the racehorse years, when conditions are not as good. That is one thing that's been proven when conditions are not as good, when we don't have perfect growing conditions, organic will be much more comparable to conventional plot yields. Our data shows us that here from this research center. So why are we, why are we looking at that? We're revisiting on the organic loan because organic flax fetches a very high premium for the organic farmer, sometimes up to $30 per bushel. But again, as I mentioned, we don't get good yields under our flax. And so with that, um, I thought, let's look at it with wheat and, and have another crop there. Maybe the weeds will be, will be better. So this is where we're at now. Um, we have very simple design this year. We have two varieties in here. FBC Dillon, a variety that was developed by the Farm Breeder Club from Northern Plains Sustainable Ag Society, de developed and released, that was developed under organic management conditions. And Glen Wheat, an NDSU variety that has been our high quality wheat um, for a number of years. Now it's been replaced by NP Vit, Vit Pro as terms of the quality check. But still, many farmer, organic farmers are planting this variety. Then we went to Omega Flax, which is our yellow flax, which again, organic farmers and conventional, of course, too, are growing and getting a premium from. But particularly in the organic market, that is a variety that organic farmers like to grow. And then our newest release, N.D. Hammond, named after Dr. Jim Hammond, our previous flax breeder. Thank you, Jim, for all your hard work. So we have soul of each one of these. The wheat is seeded at, as the seeding rate I use on these plots, at 1.6 million pure live seed per acre, which it comes to about 110 to 120 pounds or two bushels. Our flax here is seeded at 60 pounds to the acre, and which is the rate we use in organic production. Organic production tends to use higher seeding rates than conventional. It doesn't mean that conventional farming doesn't, but we tend to use higher seeding rates because we need more plants for the competition since we're not using synthetic herbicides to control our weeds. We're using crop rotation, management, and, and factors like that to control our weeds. Now, the other treatments we have here, we've, we took, now again, this is FBC Dillon wheat on these two, and we used, we used FBC Dillon wheat at two-thirds the rate and at flax at two-thirds the rate. So that means we're at a million plants per acre on the Dillon, 
and the flax is at 43 pounds per acre. Ironically, that's about the same rates when I look in the annual report. They used, the first year, they used 65 pounds to the acre and 32 pounds per acre. Very, very close. And now again, we have the same treatment with Glen, again, with uh, the, the, the lower rates, two-thirds rates of each one of the crops. Um, specifically, after this year, we'll, we'll fine-tune it and, and then start varying rates and stuff like that, but this is just our first proof of concept year. Now, ironically, this year, as you, we look in this plot here with, with the Dillon wheat and the flax, you can hardly see the wheat. The flax is going to far out favor, so the results are not going to be the same. This can be, this is due partially to the drought, the very dry conditions we're in, but it can also be, to confound the issue, it can be our previous cover crop here. Now, we couldn't terminate the cover crop because it was a rye mixture with rye, turnips, um, crimson clover, and radishes. That was the cover crop. We, because we were so wet last fall with the, the, the big rainfall and, and, and we could not terminate the crop, so it had to be terminated this spring. That can be confounding the issue with the wheat, the cereal crop, and that could be why the flax looks so great. If you take a shot and look at this flax, this is a plot that has not been harrowed. We can't harrow flax anyway. And it has not been hand weeded or anything. I think any organic farmer would love to have a field like this. And this goes against everything I told you, where I can't, weeds out compete me. But it's, I, it's gonna be a very exciting year to see what happens here. And you know, again, not a new concept that's been done forever. We're just revisiting it and trying to find new tools and new varieties how to do this. And I, ironically, I wanna read just a quick blurb from the, uh, the report that Dr. Pat Carr had in 1991 annual report. His closing statement, he says, since it remains unclear how wheat flax intercrop, intercrops respond to plant population changes, additional research is planned to determine how intercrop performance is influenced by lower seeding rates. Well, Dr. Pat Carr, you're a visionary just like Dr. John Gardner was. And so we're gonna revisit this and see what happens. We're gonna find out ways that we can make it better for your farm so that you can get good returns on your flax and have cleaner flax and, and get better profit. That's what we're about here at the Research Center. Thank you very much. Thank you.